Let's look at Syria, because this is going to be a big challenge for President Obama. He originally established red lines, and then, as uh, Ambassador Lagon said, um, we decided to go with the Russian proposal to remove chemical weapons. This has a good side, because it's good for nonproliferation. On the other hand, it almost gave uh, President Bashar al-Assad a license to use conventional weapons to such a degree that uh, he's really taking advantage of attacking his own people with impunity. So coming up on Geneva 2 in January, um, how do you see this playing out, and, and what is the U.S. role? Well, I think it's a really serious problem. First of all, President Obama was extremely unwise in painting a red line and declaring it as such. History indicates that any time you paint a line in the sand, whether it's Dean Acheson saying, Korea is not within our security framework interest, or it's April Glaspie telling Saddam Hussein, we have no concern about your territorial desires here in Iraq. Painting lines can cause serious problems. My sense was that was the first mistake. The second mistake was not to address early on the real mass atrocities that were occurring in Syria. Right after the protests started in Syria, there were a lot of disenfranchised members of the military who were opposing the regime. They were pretty much people the United States could have worked with and something could have been done then. Because the international community did not engage then, we found Syria becoming a magnet for all kinds of groups, all kinds of organizations, an al-Qaeda affiliate and others. And so now it's really a mess. There's no organized opposition. There are a series of different opposition groups, and I don't really think it's a group that we can now work with. So here's what I think is going to happen. I actually think that Syria is probably going to meet the deadline for the destruction of chemical weapons, and Assad will remain in place, Russia will be happy, and the United States will again paint it itself in a box where it can't really take any action. The only hope, and this is horrible, the only hope is if the situation gets even worse that perhaps the international community would take some kind of positive action. But my fear is, in a year or two, Assad will still be in power. They will not be using chemical weapons. Russia will be happy that Assad's in power, and people will continue to die. This is a very depressing scenario. Back to you, uh, Ambassador Lagon. With regard to Syria, again, this points to the larger issue that I hinted at in my introduction. Some critics say that President Obama's emphasis on diplomacy, which is a good thing normally, uh, perhaps is not so good in this particular scenario because it lacked the credible threat of force. That's, that's what some critics are saying. What, what is your view with respect to Syria, how the United States handled the situation? To what extent is this going to be, uh, to, to continue to uh, impair or hinder the reputation of the United States? Well, it is pro a problem not only for the Syrian people, but more generally for a positive a role for U.S. leadership. Um, I, I, you know, I think it's a false dichotomy to say that you can, you know, do nothing or have uh, dialogue for conflict resolution, or you have to have an invasion. Mm -hmm. that, that, and the um, I, I entirely agree with Tony uh, that there was an opportunity earlier on to engage elements of the opposition who were more liberal, as it were, who might have been constructive leaders if a, a change in government took place. But now there's a stronger element of extremists. Um, it's not only harder to engage, but it's trou uh, troubling to think what kind of government might replace Assad's much as it needs replacing. Um, I think uh, it, it, there is a degree to which President Obama is, is like someone who's playing cards and he waits for everybody else to put their hand on the table before he puts his hand on the table. The United States needs to offer leadership. It's not the dominant power in the world, but it's a catalyst for others to act. And if the Security Council will not uh, in the UN uh, back action. We need to think of that time that we took uh, action, the West took action, um, to try and uh, use force against Serbia to prevent ethnic cleansing in Kosovo. Um, if there is a responsibility to protect and the UN Security Council deadlocks, 
then perhaps we need to realize that action is legitimate, if not perfectly lawful in the UN.